Welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast, your sanctuary with retreat experts, where we spill the tea on retreat success. Here we dive into crafting transformational guest experiences, talk about how to avoid pitfalls, and unlock marketing secrets. Whether you're a seasoned guru or a budding enthusiast, we've got the inside scoop for you. Join us as we learn how to flourish in this magical world of retreats. Hey guys, welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast, formerly the Happy Hour Podcast. It's Shannon, and today I am so excited to have an incredible guest on the show. We have been trying to schedule and reschedule for several It's probably weeks, but I feel like I'm in a time zone right now. So maybe it's been more than weeks. But as we both laughed before the show uh, started recording, it's just part of being an entrepreneur, but also trying to be a human. (laughs) So welcome to the show, Patrick. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, I'm so glad you're here. Why don't you just start off because you'll do a much better job than I probably would. But why don't you start off by just telling everyone about yourself? Sure. One of my least favorite things to do. Uh (laughs) (laughs) People, you know, when people read my bio, I'm always like cringing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm Patrick Casal. I am a licensed clinical mental health counselor in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm originally from upstate New York. I own multiple companies. Uh, one is a group practice, specifically supporting the neurodivergent and LGBTQ populations here in rural Appalachia. And the other business is called All Things Private Practice, which is a coaching and consulting business for mental health entrepreneurs, helping them grow, scale their businesses, specifically around retreats, podcasts, other things like that. I I used to do private practice coaching. I co-host the Divergent Conversations podcast with Dr. Megan Neff. It's all about neurodivergent life experiences, personal experiences, clinical perspective. I host the All Things Private Practice podcast, which is a mental health entrepreneurial podcast. I host international retreats and summits all over the world for mental health entrepreneurs. I'm a keynote speaker, an author. I hate talking about myself. I think that's it. (laughs) I love it. I feel like there was so much to unpack just in everything that you just shared about yourself. And just what I did, my little bit of research before we jumped on this call, I thought, oh my goodness, you've got so much to offer. I know that we're going to go off key here and that's just how my podcast go. But tell me a little bit about neurodivergent. To me, it feels like a little bit something that's now really being talked about more than probably it ever has been. And I love that. But could you just share with everyone what that is? Yeah. So when we're using the term neurodivergent, it's a wide umbrella, which there's a lot of conditions that would fall under that umbrella. It's basically saying like, hey, the brain and the development and the neurology kind of diverged from the quote unquote typical pathway in terms of developmental milestones. So I would say the two big conditions that we are seeing a lot of is autism ADHD. I myself am an autistic ADHD person. So those are the things I talk about the most, I would say, in terms of like that umbrella in general. So yeah, I think we're seeing more and more of that because there's just more neurodivergent content creators coming out and like speaking publicly about their experiences. There's more research being done finally acknowledging that like, oh, autism and ADHD impact more than just like young white boys. So we're seeing a lot more people in the space. And I think that's really great. More people are pursuing testing, more people are doing self assessment, diagnostic testing. So I think the one in 31 people statistic like that says, oh, one in 31 people are autistic. It's probably more like one in 15 to 20. So I would assume everyone listening knows someone who is autistic or maybe undiagnosed themselves. So I just wrote a book called You're Autistic, Now What? Dot, dot, dot. A survival and support guide for late in life diagnosed autistic people and their loved ones. And for me, that's really my passion area at the moment. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I've just been noticing it come up more and more lately. And it, it does. It makes me happy because I feel like it's not about labels. It's just really about understanding who you are and why you are the way you are, (laughs) why you operate or think the way you think. And then that way too, it just gives you kind of, you know, one opportunity to work with someone maybe like yourself, but the ability to map out things a little quote unquote differently than like you said, the typical plan would be. And so I just love that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Are you a retreat host looking to take your marketing skills to the next level? Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned pro, our Retreat Marketing Masterclass is here to help you master, and I mean master, the art of retreat marketing. In this dynamic class, you'll dive deep into both digital and traditional marketing techniques, tailored specifically for retreat hosts. 
Learn the secrets of social media strategies, content marketing, and even how to leverage AI to boost your outreach. But that's not all. Our masterclass offers continuous updates to keep you aligned with the ever-evolving market trends. Imagine transforming your retreats into sought-after, sold-out experiences. Ready to turn your vision into reality? Join our Retreat Marketing Masterclass today and watch your retreats flourish. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your marketing game. Visit RetreatMarketingTools.com to enroll now and start your journey towards becoming a marketing master. Okay, so let's talk about retreat leaders. So it sounds like you do a lot of support for those in the mental health field as far as building their business. And one of those aspects is probably hosting retreats. But talk about how you help you know mental health professionals build their business and then also how that equates to retreats. Yeah, so I am a firm believer when we are talking about entrepreneurship, about taking risks, embracing self-doubt, perfectionism, imposter syndrome. Because so often for mental health, entrepreneurs specifically, we didn't get any business training in grad school for the most part. A lot of the conversations around business were like taboo as if like, oh, that's not something you can do or only a few people do that and are successful, which is complete. Can I curse on this podcast? Absolutely. Which is complete bullshit. (laughs) I think that narrative of like, you don't get into this field to make money (laughs) is like a running joke in grad school in community mental health. And if you surround yourself with that all of your career, It's easy to fall into that mindset of like, yeah, clearly, like, I don't know how to run a business. I can't be successful. Nobody's going to pay me. All of those narratives go through our heads. And then when we're starting something new, it's scary. Like, I remember leaving my community mental health job as a program director back in 2017 because I was just so fed up with the burnout and the lack of resources and the poor pay to start my private practice. And I was so afraid. Like, Who's going to pay me? Who's going to call me? I don't even know how to run a business. All of those things going through your head. Fast forward seven years. I never thought I'd be sitting here saying those things in my bio. And it's just amazing what we can do with the skills that we have if we understand that they are applicable in more situations than just one-on-one mental health therapy. Yeah, I love this. And I don't know if you are in a lot of the Facebook groups that are out there for retreats and retreat leaders, and there's just a lot of Facebook groups. But what's interesting about us having this conversation and how much I've noticed in those groups, mental health therapists saying, I'd like to either participate in retreats as a guest speaker or learn how to host my own retreats, et cetera, and so forth. And it is one of the ways that I got into hosting retreats is my day job used to be a mental health therapist. And I knew that it would be even more beneficial for folks to get away from their day-to-day lives to really work on the tools that they want to work on. And so I just love that you're talking about business with mental health therapists because you are right. My entire master's program, there was not one course on business. (laughs) Not Not one. Not even a single conversation. Like, nope. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But I think the skill sets that mental health professionals have, you can run entrepreneurial retreats. You can run wellness retreats. Like, You can run retreats that help people with their marriages. You can run retreats that help people gain confidence and find their true selves. Like, There's so much that we can do, but we keep ourselves small if we surround ourselves with people who tell you, you can't do this. And that is a self-limiting belief that is contagious. It's so contagious. Hey, it's Shannon here. I'm just popping in really quickly to ask a big favor. Would you pause the show and go review it for us? Please. Reviews really help us to be able to get more guests and more experts on the show to help you transform your retreats. So if you wouldn't mind pausing and leaving us a review, that would mean everything. And if you're not already subscribed, do that too. All of the belief systems can be contagious, and that's why it's important that whatever you're doing, you're surrounding yourself with those who uplift rather than tear you down. But I just, I love this. And you know what? You really nailed that on mental health therapists, you know, because there is, there are different modalities, there's different focuses, there's different, you know, things that you can narrow in on, because I'm a big believer that you have to have a niche or niche, however you want to say it. And so, I mean, think about all the different things people go to therapy for, right? And so you could take any one of those topics and create an entire business model around it. Absolutely. You can create workbooks, you can create ebooks, you can create coaching programs, you can create trainings, you can create speaking engagements, you can create retreats. I mean, it's limitless. And 
you know, that's really what my retreats have become about is working through the imposter syndrome, working through the self-doubt. I kind of have coined the phrase, doubt yourself, do it anyway, for most of our retreats. That's the theme. And we really focus on taking risks, stepping out of your comfort zone. A lot of my participants, it's the first time they've internationally traveled. It's the first time they've traveled by themselves. Mm -hmm. So there's risk involved in that. There's risk when you're saying, I'm going to go to a location that I've never been. I've never even used my passport. I don't even know how to navigate customs, but I'm going to do this for myself. There's so much power in that. And yes. it's amazing to see people show up. Like, And of course, they're anxious at first and they're a little overwhelmed. And then we drop into the group and all of a sudden, you see these wonderful ideas coming to life. You see these people connecting. A lot of my participants have become lifelong friends and are traveling the globe together. And it's just that for me is always what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this. I just had a conversation with my retreat coordinator the other day, and we were talking about the fact that, you know, when I first, very very first started doing retreats, I think it was to serve a purpose, but then I also thought like I had to be the end all be all. Like it it somewhat was ego based, which was an unfortunate but learning curve. And then as I've grown through my journey of hosting retreats, which has now been over 10 years, I've really learned that the main goal is for them to connect to themselves and each other and build these lifelong relationships. And again, with themselves and with the other you know, participants and just really just learn some powerful tools in that group community setting. So I love this. <laughs> okay. One of the things we emailed about was marketing. Talk a little bit about marketing and how you know you feel like you've got a good handle on that when it comes to retreats or the business aspect of it? Yeah. So I run a retreat called the Retreat Builders Blueprint. I hate that name, by the way. I'm going to figure a better name out at some point. But nevertheless, it's a three-day event where my business partner and I sit down with you and teach you how to run a retreat, launch a retreat, write the sales pages, all the things. The thing that people get the most hung up on is marketing. And that's the struggle. And I see so many good ideas that fall flat because the marketing was really poorly done or it wasn't consistent. So a lot of you listening are probably like, well, marketing is not something I'm familiar with. It feels salesy. It feels sleazy. I don't want to be a part of social media. It's too much. I hate to say this. In this day and age, I think having a social media presence is super important if you don't have something that's already well established. Because otherwise, you are relying on like boots on the ground type of marketing and networking and relying on people in your circle to do a lot of the heavy lifting, which is typically not going to happen. I don't think anyone's ever going to market your idea more passionately than you are. I look at marketing as like storytelling. When I write sales pages, when I post on my social media, I am trying to talk about the experiences that we're having. I'm trying to showcase the food, the people, the culture, the environment, the location, the accommodations. I want people to be able to like look at my sales pages and place themselves in these events as if like, I can see myself doing this. I want to elicit an emotional and psychological response by saying, look at what this is going to offer you and look at the transformation. Marketing is consistency and it is about showing up. And there's vulnerability in showing up. There's vulnerability in putting your face on line. There's vulnerability with putting your ideas out to the world. So we really do have to get comfortable with that. I post every day. I mean, I have a social media manager, which helps. But like, our social media following is large. It grows all the time. But that's because we're consistent. You can't just post an idea of like, I've got this retreat coming up in six months. Here's the link. Here are the pictures. Here's a little description. And then disappear for a month. Like That's not how the spots are going to fill. I see that all the time, by the way. All the (laughs) <laughs> a lot of the times, it's like, this actually sounds like a cool concept, you know? And I think people get scared or overwhelmed, or they just cannot show up consistently. And then they drop the ball, and they're like, I sold one spot, now I'm giving spots away for free, or like super discounted. And there's way too much emotional and financial investment that goes into these events to do that to yourself. I hear these stories from people who are like, I lost money on my retreat. I broke even. That for me breaks my heart because like I know how much energy and time go into these events behind the scenes and during the event. So that's a big focus of mine is helping people really amplify their voice, show up authentically, but show up consistently. 
And I cannot stress the consistent piece enough. Yes, yes. And all the yeses. The consistency is so key. But I just love that you said that they'll just post something and then that's it. (laughs) I see it all the time. I have a retreat venue. So people are booking our venue to host retreats here. And I'll see, you know, I can really tell... And sorry for if you are listening, but I can really tell the ones that are like going to get a great show out versus the ones who are not. And it comes down to mostly consistency and not depending on their following. Because I have had retreat leaders who come here and they've got a giant social media following and they think that that only is going to fill the retreat. And I just feel like it might fill one, maybe. But if you want to continue your retreat business, you've got to have your we'll call them legs on a stool. You've got to have multiple ways that you are marketing your retreat. And so I'm so glad that you're talking about consistency because that above all is crucial. Well, people will pop into like other people's Facebook groups and post during their like marketing thread sessions or their marketing days. And then they're like, okay, I did it. Like that was marketing. Nobody reads that shit. Like those groups are so overwhelming. Like you're just scanning through things. So like, One thing I tell people to do is create your own Facebook group specific for your events or your retreats. Be the face, like be consistent, do Facebook lives, create that know, like, and trust factor so that people feel more comfortable giving you whatever amount of money you're asking for. Because my events are, I would consider high ticket events. Like usually the price point is like 4,500 to 6,500 per person. Uh, Last year, I launched... An Italian summit where I've rented the entire medieval village. I didn't know that was a thing you could do, but we're hosting a summit there this September. And then a event in Portugal, Greece, Spain, Asheville, and something else. <laughs> I can't even keep track. We launched them all at the same time. And I thought, wow, this wasn't a great idea. Like, this is probably too much. Plus, we have to sell 90 spots for Italy. That's going to take a year. All of those events sold out in seven days. It was very awesome. overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, but I can see how that would be overwhelming. Yeah, my VA was, she's in California. She's like, I, I think you broke the internet. I can't keep <laughs> No, that's great. I love that. Are you a retreat host looking to take your marketing skills to the next level? Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned pro, our Retreat Marketing Masterclass is here to help you master. And I mean master the art of retreat marketing. In this dynamic class, you'll dive deep into both digital and traditional marketing techniques tailored specifically for retreat hosts. Learn the secrets of social media strategies, content marketing, and even how to leverage AI to boost your outreach. But that's not all. Our masterclass offers continuous updates to keep you aligned with the ever-evolving market trends. Imagine transforming your retreats into sought-after, sold-out experiences. Ready to turn your vision into reality? Join our Retreat Marketing Masterclass today and watch your retreats flourish. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your marketing game. Visit RetreatMarketingTools.com to enroll now and start your journey towards becoming a marketing master. Okay, well, talk to the listeners about what they can look for in working with you. Like, what are your options that you have available? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we have options as simple as like a retreat roadmap and manual that I've created. It's 72 pages. It has contracts, templates, guidance, support, tips, strategies. That's on my website. It's $99. You can purchase that and get an electronic version. If you want to come to a retreat or do coaching around creating a retreat, you can go to allthingspractice.com and contact me directly. Next year, these are the events I have, which I hate listing these because it sounds crazy. January, my colleague and I, Gabrielle Giuliano Volani, I think she was on this podcast actually with you, are co-hosting a neurodivergent burnout retreat in Belize. So we have spots for that. That's specifically for neurodivergent people who are just burnt out, who want to be around other neurodivergent people, learn how to soothe your sensory and nervous systems. And I'm going to do some business coaching. I am hosting my fourth annual event in Ireland during St. Patrick's Day, but that's been sold out for a year. So that is a moot point. Um, a diversifying and creating alternative streams of income retreat in Catalonia in a beautiful villa overlooking the Mediterranean in May. A summit in Edinburgh, Scotland in July with 13 speakers. Another version of the diversifying income retreat in Catalonia in the same villa in September. 
a retreat builder's blueprint in Asheville, North Carolina to learn how to build your own retreat in October and a leadership retreat in Hania, Greece on the island of Crete in November. And that sounds insane to list all of that. I think it sounds exciting. <laughs> uh, honestly, as, a, as just someone listening to you say all that, I'm like, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes for each one. And so they can find that information in the show notes, but also you mentioned the website, which is All Things Private Practice. Is that right? All things practice. All things um, practice. Unfortunately, all things private practice is domain and was already taken. So all things Darn practice. Darn it. All things practice. But that will also be linked in the show notes so you can find all that information there as well as how to get a hold of Patrick. So Patrick, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing, I mean, the great works that you are doing both in a business aspect, but also just for humanity. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Retreat Leaders Podcast. Learn more at www.theretreatranch.com. See you next time.